In this video, we'll try we'll try to understand how to configure authentication in BGP. Now, BGP authentication is very much simple with a simple one command, neighbor, and then we have to say IP address and then name of the neighbor, IP address of the neighbor, and then password. Now, BGP just like OSPF or EHRP or RIP version two, they support authentication. Similar way, BGP also support MD5 authentication. And when the authentication is enabled, it is going to use TCP segment belonging to that BGP and it's going to verify and accept the neighborship only if the authentication is successful. Okay, so in order to have a successful authentication, both the neighbors must be must be configured on the same password. In case if your authentication fails, the neighborship will not be established. And it's just one command. And for verification, what we are going to do is we are going to continue with our previous lab configurations. And I just configured a small task here. Make sure that authentication should be established between the peers and they should use a password. Let's use the password of Cisco 123. Okay. And by default, all the routers runs version 4. So it's not really required to configure version 4. But even you can mandatory say that the neighbors the neighborship should only establish if you are using version 4. So there's no other version running as of now, but you can use this version command here. Okay. So why? Because I'm just trying to uh, use these commands and I'll use some peer groups in our next videos. But in this, in this video, we'll try to understand how to configure authentication. So if you go to the lab, the lab, I'm going to continue with the same what we did in our previous second lab, like IBGP using loopbacks. So if I try to verify, in the previous lab, I already configured the neighborship between router 2, 3, 4, and I'm using the same diagram here. So I'm going to use the same diagram which I used. If you try to see, this is the same diagram which I have been using here. Same diagram. So no changes. And already the neighborship is pre-configured here. If I try to verify my command line, if you just go and check my BGP configurations, it is the same configurations which I did in my previous lab. So all the neighbors are formed with the neighborship with loopback interfaces and I have configured remote AS and update source command for the neighbor. And the neighborship is up and there is IBGP reachability. So show IP BGP summary, neighborship is up. So I want to make sure that the router one should form neighborship with the router two, router three and router four if it is having a successful authentication. So successful authentication is required here. So by default, no authentication is required. It's not mandatory. But if you want to have a successful authentication, we need to say neighbor 12.001 and simply define the password as Cisco123. The same thing I need to do for router 3 as well. And the same thing for router 4 also. Okay. So I can configure these commands. And the same thing, if you want, even you can mandatory, you can make it mandatory that the, if the neighborship should only establish if, if it is running version 4. Okay, so that version 4 is only supported anyway. So I can even define this command. If you try to see here, there are some messages coming up. And those messages are simply saying that there is a mismatch of authentication and the neighborship will go down automatically. Okay. You can see no MD5 digest from 12, no MD5 digest from 14 because we did not configure on the other end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same commands and I'll copy paste the same commands on the notepad. Okay. So these router one configurations on the router two, I'm going to paste on the router two, it will be 11 and remaining everything is same. So all the configuration remains the same. Right. So this is something what I'm going to do on the router two. And on the router 3, again the same thing. On the router 3, I had to remove this and add 11. And then this is on the router 3. 11, 12, 14. Now on the router 4, on the router 4, we need, there is no 14. Instead of 14, it will be 12. I think 12 is a 13. And then here it will be 13. Okay, so let me copy paste these configurations. 
So this version uh, has nothing to do with authentication. Don't worry. I just used uh, that there is a command called version 4 where you can mandate that all the BGPPs must run version 4. But anyway, it's not required. So on the router 1, on the router 2, so I'll copy paste this configs on the router 2. And on the router 3, these are the configs. So when you're trying to configure some similar configurations, it's always recommended to use Notepad and edit the things and paste it back. So it will help you to save your time. Done. So once I finish the configurations, I should see all the routers uh, must have a neighborship and you should see those messages should stop by this time. I can see neighborship message. Uh, they have went to some messages. So it's coming slowly. So once I finish, the complete configurations if they are correct so still some problem here but from 3 I think from 4 okay slowly it's coming up let me check on other router 2 so on the router 2 I can see all the neighbors has been up but on the router 1 I am not able to see the neighborship between 1 and 3 so did I misconfigure anything? So I think everything seems to be okay. So now it has converged now. Now you can see the neighborship is up. On router 1, neighborship is up. And on the router 2, all the neighbors are up. And the same way on the router 3 also and router 4. You can see all the neighbors are up. So this is one simple basic task we can configure. So it's just a continuation to our previous lab where we are just trying to understand how to configure authentication in case in case if, if, if anyone asks you to configure authentication. Generally, uh, not compulsory to have authentication, but this just we need to know how to configure authentication in BGP protocol.